Hello everyone and welcome to TV Talks, the show where I take a look at both the good and the bad of what television has to offer. Today, we're looking at Back at the Barnyard! And I'll wait for you guys to stop screaming. We are kicking off Wishlist Week 2018 with this infamous Nickelodeon show that I think is a bit overhated. But more on that in a minute. Back at the Barnyard was a spin-off of the 2006 animated Nickelodeon film Barnyard, the original party animals. The film was... Alright. Not good, not bad, it was just kind of serviceable. And that's pretty much what critics at the time thought too, and audiences, and to this day, still. Nevertheless, Nickelodeon thought, hey, it'll be a great idea to make an animated series based off of this movie that everyone thought was just kind of okay. Come on, let's do it! So they did it. And they were anticipating this to be a very, very, very big hit. Promotion was everywhere. Kids' Choice Awards promotion. Animated commercials. There was all these new footage things being made, or archival footage in commercials, Nickelodeon magazine pop-ups, anything. Barnyard was anticipated to be a monster hit. And was it? Kinda. I mean, yeah, there's some memes going around right now, but at the time it was only a serviceable hit. With the first few episodes getting some pretty good reviews, but then as the series went on, especially in its second season, it stopped getting as much high praise and became very scrutinized by the general public. So what is Barnyard about? Hmm. That is a tricky question. The show says it's about some barnyard animals that pretend to be normal animals, but then when humans aren't looking, they're actually walking and talking and acting like people. But that's not really what it's about. It's about them going on wacky adventures like stopping supervillains, or fighting with the neighbors, or running for mayor, or encountering Bigfoot several times. It's one of those shows where it's just kind of so loose that anything happens. And I've always praised shows like this in the past saying, Oh yeah, because the premise is so loose, it can basically do whatever it wants. But with this, it's a little different. Because it starts off setting up its own world. Where yes, animals walk and talk and such, but they're still grounded in realism. There's still reality to this world. But then we get to the points later on where the series finale is about them fighting off aliens. Yes, aliens. So what is it that people don't like about Back at the Barnyard? Well, they don't like the animation, which I think is alright. It's kind of the same power as the movie. They don't like its tone, which I can kind of see. It takes from a lot of Jay Ward style productions where it's very, very not serious and just does whatever it can to throw a lot of ridiculous humor in its face. Which on one hand can get a little annoying for some shows, but if a show can do it well, then it works. Does Barnyard do it well? Sometimes it does well. Sometimes there are some hilarious, hilarious moments and episodes. Like the episode where Pig pretends to be their arch enemy Snotty Boy, and then the real Snotty Boy gets hit on the head and thinks that he's just some wonderful little kid. Or there's the episode where they just hijack a news newscast that's going to expose them as these walking, talking animals and then just make complete fools of themselves. And of course, there's the viewer mail and ask Dr. Pig segments. Anything with Pig and Freddy the Ferret is just amazing. They're kind of the breakout characters of the show, like Crocker from The Fairly Odd Parents or Carl and Mr. Neutron from Jimmy Neutron. And yes, those are both Nickelodeon shows. I did that on purpose. The humor in this is just rapid fire. It's like a machine gun when it comes to humor. It's just joke, 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 joke. That's all it is. Non-stop joke, throwing it at the wall, and admittedly, not all of them stick. There's some real groaners in there. But a majority of them in the first season seem to work. And it's probably because they have simpler plots, like that they think that the farmer is going to eat them all, so they end up running away. Or where, again, they try to take the snotty boy identity, and there's all that. And there's often the conflicts with Mrs. Beatty, the one person who actually knows that they're alive and walking and talking, but she's always deemed as crazy Miss Beatty. But then we get to the second season, which saw its successes from the first season, which was rapid fire humor and all these intricate little plots for such a loose premise, and then it really cranked it up. 
Then the jokes were not just a machine gun, it was a hydrogen bomb of jokes. Every single second had to be crammed in with some kind of joke. Often the same ones being repeated over and over. But in the second season, something was missing. It's wit. In the first season, despite the fact that there was non-stop joke, 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 they still were able to think through them, kind of like with a lot of J. Ward productions like Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes, they were fast, yes, they were kind of stupid, but they were well thought through stupid. I know it sounds kind of like an oxymoron, but it's clever with just how dumb it is, and sometimes you laugh at just how dumb the jokes are. But in the second season, it's a lot of the time just trying to be that, huh, kids will watch anything, so let's just throw this in. <laughs> there are some really good episodes, though where they make this substance that basically adheres to anything, so it's like this super glue, but it causes things to explode. Or there's one where we actually get some decent heart. I think this is the only time in the entire series we actually get a decent level of emotion. You see, Mrs. Beattie is the main antagonist of the show, like I said. She's always trying to expose the barnyard animals as what they are. And she doesn't really get along with her husband very well, because he's kind of a, as she describes him, a lump. He just sits in his chair, watches TV, and Jen tries to remember what life was like before he died inside. Well, his mom comes to visit and basically kicks Nora Beattie out of the house, and she actually comes to the barnyard animals for help. And they actually end up burying the hatchet, and judging by the fact that this is one of the final episodes, and she doesn't really appear in the Aliens episode too much, I think this is actually her burying the hatchet with the barnyard animals. We actually get to take a look at the psyche of this character that we were deemed as evil and insane and completely unstable. She actually has some decent emotions and she does care about the ones that she actually scrutinizes. That was actually a pretty nice touch. While the second season definitely did have some writing differences, it actually was still okay. But there is one thing that I cannot deny that this show does way, way wrong, and that's its over-reliance on ludicrous ideas. Now, ludicrous ideas being just kind of weird ideas that can kind of work, you know? Like uh, anything that you'd find in regular show. But the thing is, this more takes place in the second season and a bit in the first, too. They set this up that this is definitely our world, but that all animals act like this when we don't look. Okay, that's fine. But when you get anthropomorphic plant monsters and, of course, aliens and giant Hulk monsters... This doesn't fit in the world that they previously established. Yeah, still, it's funny, but it doesn't really make for a cohesive world, and not having a cohesive world also makes you care less about the characters. Which the characters already, admittedly, aside from Pig and Freddy, are nothing special. But it's not the worst thing ever. It still makes for an enjoyable show, albeit not a too great put-together one. So... Despite what a lot of people say these days, I give Back at the Barnyard the Archibald seal of approval. And yes, this even includes Season 2, as Season 2 has just enough good qualities for me to approve it. What did you guys think of Back at the Barnyard? Comment below, let me know. Alright, it's time to get on to the next video. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.